Hello everybody, I'm Simon and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering lore. Since I concluded the Planeswalkers Origins of Magic Origins, I've started to think of different topics to cover. With all the hype around the upcoming battle for Zendikar, I figured I may as well start doing stories from the original Zendikar set. Hopefully this will give new and old players alike knowledge of the plane before we return to it in the next set. Also, I want to take this time to apologize for the lack of uploads lately. I've recently suffered a horrifying, if not very odd, injury. Now, what I'm about to tell you can be extremely graphic and cringy, so viewer discretion. And don't worry, what you'll be seeing on screen isn't real. So, I was cleaning a pot of some dried pasta of the angel hair variety when I encountered a rather stubborn noodle. Using my thumbnail in an attempt to remove it, I somehow slipped and the noodle lodged itself under my thumbnail. It's so deep that recovering the noodle is impossible, and as you can imagine, it's rather painful. Again guys, I apologize for the lack of content this week, but don't worry, I should return to my normal schedule soon. Now, I'm sure you guys are quite done hearing about my gross thumb noodle, so let's just get right back into the lore. In this video, I'm going to go over one of the lesser known topics of Zendikar, that being the plane's vampire population. To me, vampires are one of the coolest, if not iconic, creature types, and much like angels, they typically mean a lot to a set storyline. But on Zendikar, vampires seem more alien than on most other planes. The vampires of Zendikar mostly reside on the human continent of Gul'draz, a fitting land for such creatures. Gul'draz is a tangled knot of infested swamps and hidden mangroves. Its jungles and marshes are perfect hunting grounds for those who hunt in the shadows. Despite being native to this area of Zendikar, vampires don't seem to be native to the plane of Zendikar itself. While it's true that many planes throughout the multiverse have native vampires, Zendikar doesn't appear to be one such plane. The vampires of Zendikar are just too alien to be native. We know this mainly because of their culture, clothing, and from the accounts of true native Zendikarians. Nahiri, the core stoneforger who has lived on Zendikar for generations, remembers first seeing vampires on Zendikar. So we know these vampires aren't native to Zendikar, but how do they get there? The most common way vampires are created is through other vampires, feeding on sentient beings and transforming them. It's also possible for beings to become vampires through a dark enchantment spell, but that doesn't seem to be the case on Zendikar. A vampire must have visited the plane far in its past and spread the infliction as it traveled, but that would require a vampire who could planeswalk. I wonder if we know anyone like that. Of course, I'm kidding. We all know that Soren Markov is a long-lived vampire who traveled to Zendikar from his home on Innistrad in order to deal with the Eldrazi. While there, he must have fed at some points, leading to vampires on the plane today. This makes a lot of sense. I mean, Soren is noted as being centuries old and loves to travel the multiverse. Nahiri has also lived on Zendikar for a long time, but has gone through long periods of hibernation. It's possible that Soren visited Zendikar during one of her isolations and spread vampirism without her knowledge. I'm sure Nahiri must have been really upset to see these creatures on her world. I wonder if that's why Soren told Ugin that her and him were arguing. Makes you think. Anyway, Soren being the creator of the Zendikar vampires makes a lot of sense. Vampires take after the tastes and traits of the vampire who transformed them. This is why these vampires' culture is so different than others known to Zendikar. If they were created by Soren, then they would live as vampires on Innistrad live, which in this case is very true. Unlike many civilizations on Zendikar, the vampires live a very opulent lifestyle. They surround themselves with as much wealth as possible, living in the grandest homes possible while wearing the fanciest clothes possible. Their culture is similar to that of early European royalty and is based off the vampires of Innistrad. I believe Soren must have created at least five vampires while in Zendikar, and I base this on the number of families found in the vampire capital known as Malakir. Each family has status and control over different parts of the city. They're kind of like different political factions in a sense. Each family is ruled over by a blood chief. These are immortal vampires who have in turn transformed other beings on the plane, including them into their family. Unlike many vampire species in the multiverse, most Zendikar vampires only have a lifespan of 200 years. 
This means that the Blood Chiefs don't have the ability to pass on immortality, but the vampire who created them must have been, giving more evidence to the Sworn Theory. The five families are Calistria, Nerkana, Emevria, Arnave, and Get. Each family has their own tastes and passions based on the desires of their blood chief. For example, the Calestria family, the wealthiest and most powerful family in Malakir, is ruled by a self-proclaimed high-born blood chief named Drana. As a result of their status and this blood chief, this family is very snobbish. On the other hand, we have the Get family, ruled by the blood chief Kalatas. This family is perhaps the poorest family of vampires on the plane, but that doesn't mean they're without power. Their leader, and so the rest of the family, are ruthless and clever schemers. They were able to seize control of a major port of trade, and with this new territory, this once belittled family now threatens to become as powerful as the Calestria. As for the other vampiric families on Zendikar, we don't really know much about them. We know that the Nurkana family are notorious assassins who are feared by all others, but other than that, the remaining two families are very mysterious. Besides the mystery which surrounds them, vampires have also caused a lot of damage to Zendikar itself. When a vampire feeds on a creature and drains its blood without destroying the husk, that husk becomes a null. Nulls are faceless zombies who are faster, stronger, and more intelligent than the average undead. Usually, nulls are under the control of the vampire who created them, but if left without orders, the null will kill all living things it comes across. Vampires may seem like the masters of their own destinies, forging a home in a world not native to their kind and all, but this wasn't always the case. When the great Aldrazi came to Zendikar, no species was safe, and it's arguable that the vampires were perhaps the worst off. While many were merely killed, vampires as a species were enslaved by the mana-devouring colorless gods. They were forced to destroy their own world, with the Aldrazi using their very anatomy to control them. Zendikar vampires eventually grew hooks from their heads and shoulders. These were used specifically by the Eldrazi to manipulate their movement and to control them utterly. They lived as servants to these gods for years until the Eldrazi were imprisoned once again. Since then, the vampires must live with the reminders of their past, the hooks and markings which symbolize their former masters. With us returning for the battle for Zendikar, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they develop the vampire species on this plane. I really want to know more about the vampire families and uncover the mystery behind their origins. I'm sure Soren must have been involved, but even so, he and Nahiri must really have a lot to discuss, cause she seems kinda pissed. And I should probably mention that there is a theory out there that Nahiri herself has become a vampire as a result of Soren's deeds, but that's a topic for another video. I also want to see how the vampires deal with the escape and terror of Ulamog. Will they revert back to their status as slaves or fight against this god for their home and plane? As you can tell, I'm really excited for this set. So many questions to be answered. In any case guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really goes a long way in supporting future content. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.